Oh, there you What's up, man? What's up, bro? So I'm trying to tell you. I was about to say, man. It says, waiting for 50 Cent. I don't know if you was going to Teddy Riley yourself and not know how to work. <laughs> He said, don't tell, don't tell me you can't work that, that, the live now. <laughs> How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. No complaints. How's quarantine treating you? It, it's been good, man. You know, I, I, you know, I'm so used to being able to use the gym yeah. to go in the, the, the gym stuff. Then now, because I had a full on, like a whole fitness facility in Connecticut, I was like, yo, I don't need that here. Because it's stuff that I didn't need in my space because, you, you know, how you, you buy a weight bench or like a, a curl set just to have something around the house like uh -huh. and then you just walk past it all yeah. the time yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what was happening in Connecticut too because it was in the house like I was like it was right there I wasn't doing it as much and then when I put it in my schedule to go mm -hmm. I just got just mm -hmm. ready to go and there was always something there like you know I think when you go to a good gym it's usually girls there it's like really it's hot girls around yeah that's the gym's better really yeah south. The gym is better. I'm surprised that you actually uh that you actually go to the gym though, being that it yeah. seemed like you wouldn't be able to get a good workout and people coming up to you bothering you. Put the hood uh, like like out. Now I put the, the headphones mm -hmm. on and doing mm -hmm. doing stuff like busy. Every now and then you get the guy to stop like yo in the middle of the, <laughs> the workout day, which you like as long as the music is playing, you can get it zone on, zone out. Well let's talk, bro. I mean it seems like the world is kind of paused, but you're still dropping product on us. You got the new book out. Yeah, and then um, that, the, the, the BMF project got greenlit during the pandemic, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, a lot of stuff. I've been working like this. A lot of these things are, are things I had in the plans, like like I had worked on them years before. Like the BMF, mm -hmm. it's been four years that I show picked up. So it's finally greenlit and ready to go. And funny, strange enough, uh, T got out today. I saw that. Yeah, I got saw out that. today. So it's cool. And then um, meet your plot. So we're gonna, we're gonna find out, you know, what the outcome with that is. But, but so just on that right there, let me ask you: Does T coming out? Does T getting out? Uh, does that change anything about the project sure. itself? I mean, well, does that it, it allowed me more access to him to communicate about it to different right. things. So, because the only restraints that was there was the the time, how much time we was able to use. With Randy and them to communicate. Randy is the writer showrunner for it, Randy Hudgens. Mm -hmm. And for him to um, get on and communicate different things with them. Because when, when you're doing it, the series based on a true story, you do mm -hmm. want the events to have some sort of uh, connection to the experience. A different Whether it, it breaks timelines or not, mm -hmm. all of it happened. Mm -hmm. Like when you're watching it, that's the, that's the difference. But a lot of times, look up television production period, they want you to go find the best story, and now that you found the best shit out there, make some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how crazy it is. Like, it's like, yo, you want to make something up after you found this? Like, you know, like, because then it, it becomes out of sequence, and it's, it's, it's a different energy to it, but they want you to make it up because other people are a part of every experience that means right. anything to us in life, and then they can claim Something so it'd be a million and one lawsuits if you just did it exactly the way it happened. Yeah. Now you're in the middle of that. What I guess the question is, they're so famous in the culture, they're so famous, um, yeah. I guess in, in hip hop legend, um, and street legend. What what about their story you felt like made you want to tell it? Well, it's not that much of a period piece initially, because there's like their conviction was in two thousand and five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it means so, it's so relevant to the culture and it means that much because for a lot of the, the hip hop artists, like LL, I, I met LL Gucci in my neighborhood from Black Just, like from the drug dealers in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. You see sure. what I'm saying? So L is, is from the police, from farmers, from the rock, from farmers, Queens. So it's like they're, they're, the, the real superheroes band growing up was the people who had financial freedom. And the things that represented that to us because we had the restraints of, of poverty in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So at, at that point in the early stages, there was more money in the neighborhood than in hip hop. Word, of course. Yeah, yeah now it's shifted. It's grown to the point that it, it, we could, you could sell 13, 14 million records on one disc. 
Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like that, it, it, it changed the group. Because when, when I first had my experience with hip hop, there was only one hour. You had to take, I take my grandmother's cassettes because she used to go and take, take the church when she was at the yeah. church. Take the tissue, put it in the little square at the back of it, <laughs> and record over it. We're ready to learn enough stuff right. playing the hip hop music. Had all of the different the street music there that if you didn't catch it on the radio during the time that they was playing it, it just you didn't get it, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was a different thing, and it was because of that exclusivity. I think it was it made it cooler because mm. you you had to be there, you had to have it. You didn't you don't know you don't got it. Like it, it would be the live tape from the rooftop, right. like what the whole night they they, they taped it and they, and they got the tape or different things. And you're like yo. Too young to get in, but I'm not too young to hear it. To hear, to hear oh, music, I'm yeah. Right. So with the book, um, hustle harder, hustle smarter. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a self help book. It's kind of right. from from what I hear, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't think of Fifty Cent as the self help <laughs> guy. <laughs> what made you want to get into? You're very competitive. Yeah. So and, what made you want to kind of give some of the keys to to your mental kingdom to other people? You know what? Look, I I looked at it, man. Like when I first, the the because they kept approaching me about it for a few times, right? And I was like, nah, like because I thought that if you write a self help book, then you should, should you kind of view yourself as an expert on life. Like right. the guys that write these books that I don't know them from anywhere, I look at them like they think they're an expert. Okay. You know what I'm <laughs> so right. I, when when I actually started approach like talking to my Joe, my my uh, book agent and everything. And he was like, no, like, you don't understand. Like, you can, you you put your nuances into it like, and mm -hmm. into everything that you're actually doing. And I'm like, then this could be cool to do it that way. And then then my voice is, is a different audience that will listen. Okay. Or, you know, and, like, they, the person who probably wouldn't be reading in the self-help section, finding something to read, may go and pick up the book. Because of the you know that connection to our culture and to just who I am overall, like what they're seeing, you know. Because I, I've I've constantly said that the coolest way to develop yourself as an artist is to offer more of yourself, right? And it's because people can beat you at a lot of things; they cannot beat you at being you. What up? You yeah. know what I mean? And that would create the separation in itself without without the uh, you you trying to force something different. You know, Why do you think that's a lesson that's so hard for people to learn? Like you've all you you've stayed yourself, for for better and for worse. You've been fifty cent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Sometimes yeah. people they see the comments and like, damn, fifty wild, and then sometimes we're laughing along. Why yeah. is it? Why is it so hard? Do you think for other people, other rappers, to exist yeah. with that same authenticity and put it all out there? Just just not comprehending what I'm what I'm doing at that point. Look, man, I say some stuff. And you'd be like, why did you say that? Oh, like, like, like you can make <laughs> yeah, a joke. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, damn, bitch, come on, you're bro. Like, and, and I'm only doing that so I can say what I want later. Ah. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Because if you're going at, at, at different points, there's things that they talk about being on agenda or things that they start to say, oh, you can't say this. You can't say these words. You can't say this. You can't do. There's so many limitations. That if look when I when I'm doing well when they see successful moments in my career they say rap mogul Curtis Fifty Cent Jackson right when something goes wrong they go rapper Fifty Cent or right. yeah, 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 yeah yeah so the way that I, I use it at, at different points is I'll do those things for shock value at points and my, when they see my audience is not adjusting to it like there's people publicly they have complete different views from me that are, will come across the things that I'm saying for shock value. And the reason why they don't pursue their attack is because they look and they see everyone under there just laughing. Yeah. Instead of agreeing with them when they, their gut feels like that. Mm. You see so what I'm saying? Like, you weaponize the comment section a little bit. Like, right. It's like something. when they expect these things from me at points, because I've done them, you know, over and over, it, it, gives, it permits me to actually express myself when the other other people, they don't even, they don't use this. Like, what well, Puffy's brother love on Instagram. <laughs> That's not the guy that, be, that, that got everything that, that 
had bad boy the whole time, did all of that. Hey, but people changed though. That was a long time ago, man. It, it, no, man, he's still the same Come on, person. Man. Man. Puff, Puff is evolved. He cares about different things now than he did then, man. Yeah, you got, you know, look, look. I said this. I said this, right? When I t I took notes from Puffy's career and things that he did, his temperament, right? And when you got like, it'll feel competitive at points because it's supposed to be right. competitive. But you can't even look at a person and, and be competitive if you don't have some level of respect for him, right? And a lot of times when I'm saying something disrespectful about Puff, it's happening when we have competitive products. Yeah. It's something there. It's a reason why we compete. No puffy juice. No more puffy juice. Fuck out of here with that shit. All of that. And then it's things that I know he can't do. Like compliance, he, he has to behave a certain way. So he can't, like, as far as the success of Ciroc and Diageo at that point, mm. that his company's not willing to let what Beam, what my company was willing to let happen to see success in a failing area. Right. Versus someone who's been successful for a long time and they're kind of uptight about having to pay him as much money as they're paying him. Because mm. it's the pay scale. It's like you're up here in your pay scale. So they're, like, now really critical of what you do and the saying. Right. You know, Let me ask you a question. Just listening to you talk, uh, the way that you break down these different mechanisms of competition, hmm. it seems like more than anything in your life, more than the, the art of the rap, more than the business mogul to make money, it seems hmm. like the thing that's driving you and has always driven you is just competition. You should like, be. How much, when you're talking to people, how much do you feel like because people, some people think you can overcompete. How much has competition made you who you are? And without that, do you feel like you would have anything else? Would you do? Would you paint or make music just to make music if there was nobody to make music against? Look, if there was look, look when when yeah, I, I would have done it because it was a way. Man, it was a bigger, higher level. Yeah. In, in the environment that I grew up in, the superheroes they sold drugs. I tell you, even LL was broke chain. They had it. Yeah. When he got the advance off the record, he could get it and look like they already was having it in the neighborhood. Right. Was hustling. So it was optional to go in those directions. I didn't have the same skill set. Like L, he feels older to us because he got on so early. He was like 15. He was a kid. Star. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like MJ, neck and neck and age, but they're not. Uh, but one feels older than the other because one's been on so much longer. Yeah, I'm bad was out when I was in the first grade. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like he him, L is like would run DMC in my head a little right. Like, early, early. You know, and then there there's it's it's interesting because when when you get to like I don't care what you're doing in life, right? I think if there's whatever you're doing, if there's someone that's in the position in another company, it be it should be some competitive advantage, especially if you Respect the guy. You see the guy is good, then you should be competitive. And, and y'all may, may not be after the same things in life completely. It just may be what, what you're actually working on at the point. It's just when, when you tie it, you'll find new energy when you tap into that competitive side of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's something else. It's like, oh, when you can look and think they, they might be working, continuing to work, and you sitting there tired now, you find a way to focus and get back to it right. first versus the, those other points. Like there, there's whenever most, most what's the names have competing products. This it's very rare that there's a category and it's just one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And when you're doing that, whoever's at the top of the, the scale, I usually make the top person my, my competition. Right. You know, you don't pick guys that don't don't even matter. Like creatively, you got people that make moments. I, like I don't have favorite artists. I have favorite moments from them. There's points that an artist does something that's so good that you know that listen, we all could do it. None of us could do that better than he just did that. Mm. The way he made that record. Yeah. Nobody else. We could, none of us could could have did that better than. If you get so you feel saying. so you have seen that you felt like that before. You've seen somebody do something and been like, I fifty cent cannot do that. Right, yeah. Bust the rhymes. Put your hands where my eyes can see it. Right. Um it was like we have those moments. Like there's a lot of records that are out, but there's 
a record that comes in the middle of all of that that you go, you know, you know, it's really good when you're an artist is because you wish you made it. Mm. Like the so song. What, so answer, answer that for me. Like, what's some songs that you wish you made? Look, uh, Buzzy, put your hands in your eyes to see. Um, Black Rob Wolf. Oh, that's a hard record. Um, even uh, what's the name of the record I like? Lean Back. 